Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Well, happy Wednesday. <laughs> it's actually, I don't even think it's Wednesday yet. It is currently 11.41 p.m. on Tuesday evening. And um, very relaxed, very peaceful. And uh, just made some coffee. And uh, put four pumps of the macadamia nut uh, Tarani syrup in there. And then this is the butter toffee coffee. So let's let's try it and see how it goes. Oh, that's delicious. Um, I it's a little cold <laughs> in Indianapolis tonight. It feels like it's about to start snowing. So I thought, you know what? Tonight I think I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I don't want it's like steaming up, but I don't want it to steam in front of the camera. So I'm gonna put it down over here next to my candles. Um. I was saying this in my vlog tonight. I got made a little joke in my in my vlog. I was showing my candles, and um, this candle will not stay lit. Um, it's like this woodwick candle. It won't stay lit. And I said, "She's not a candle. She's just a loser." <laughs> I thought that was kind of a. <laughs> I thought that was kind of a funny joke. Um, speaking of funny jokes. I was just upstairs as my husband goes to sleep. I put all of the Christmas bedding on today. I filmed a whole video about that over on my Peter Does Stuff channel. I put my Christmas tree up in the bedroom. And uh, Boo Radley, little Boo Radley, was all wrapped up in the Christmas bedding. <laughs> and he was like all like this. And I said, I was kissing him on his little top of his head. And I said, Boo Radley, I said, you are the Christmas dog. And he said, I am? <laughs> I say this out loud and my husband just sits there and just like rolls his eyes, right? And he's just like this the whole time. And he's like looking up at me as I'm talking to him. And I said, Boo Radley, I said, you are the Christmas dog. And he said, I am? And I said, yes. I said, do you know what that means? And he said, I have no idea what that means. And I said, Boo Radley, if you're the Christmas dog, that means that you hold the wishes, the Christmas wishes of the entire world in, in your little paw. And he said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I want that responsibility. That's a lot of responsibility. Alex started laughing when I said that. So, welcome to the world of the conniving, calculating drama channel behind the scenes. In his uh, Christmas coziness, having conversations with the Christmas dog of the world, Boo Radley. Yes, it's all deceit over here. It's all deceit. Cheers. By the way, speaking of deceit, um, uh, I was speaking to, uh, <laughs> I said I was going to say this in a video because we know exactly who it is. Um, I was talking to a uh, fellow drama channel, Dustin Daly, er earlier this evening, and he discovered something quite interesting about a few channels that... Um, there are a few channels out there that, um, I mean, he has literally like irrefutable <laughs> receipts of how this is all working. Dustin Daly can figure out anything. I will tell you that I've known that for seven years. Okay. <laughs> when we were friends and when we weren't, I knew that he was just, he could figure stuff out like that, but he figured out that there are quite a few channels out there. It's not Colony Ballinger, but <laughs> quite a few, uh, channels kind of surrounding our own community that are, and have been for a while, like buying views and making it look like they're getting a lot more views than they are. And I mean, I knew that that went on. I've said that in videos, right? But I was kind of like, oh, well, so this is all smoke and mirrors. The subscribers are smoke and mirrors. You're not actually, you're getting actually the same kind of views that I am. <laughs> but it doesn't look like that on paper. It doesn't look like that on the front end on YouTube, but behind the scenes on the back end on YouTube, wow, it's a different story over there. I actually think, um, and to those people out there that know you're about to get called out because Dustin's probably going to make a video about this, just so you know, I think it's pathetic, okay? I have always said from the very beginning, back in the day, people be like, oh, you're buying subscribers or buying views and all this. Listen, okay, I've got better things to spend my money on, all right? Like sweaters for my dog and uh, cozy mysteries on Audible. I got better things to spend my money on. And I've always said, you know, I think <clears throat> I started YouTube much later in life than most of these people. So for me, it was really never about the the numbers game and uh, being famous. I mean, I, I never in a million years thought that 500 people would watch my videos. You know, I, I feel absolutely blessed 
to have the people that are watching my videos now. Not to mention that I've been around for seven years and I'm still going strong, you know? So uh, on seven different channels, my vlog channel right now is consistently getting more views than it's ever gotten. And it's, I mean, and it's like 4,000 views a day and I'm extreme, and this is the end of our seventh year vlogging over there. And so I'm very, very happy about that. You know, like I don't need to fake it with smoke and mirrors. I've always said, and I've said this from the very beginning, Sure, we all make videos because we want views, right? Because we want, the more views we get means the more people that are watching it. But I always wanted to know that that number was real. Like I, because when you go to bed at the end of the night, you know those numbers are fake, right? Like you know that you're probably not really getting 160,000 views that you're actually probably getting closer to like 22. So you know that. <laughs> And maybe nobody else does, but you know that, right? Like, you know you're a fraud at the end of the day. No matter how you paint that picture to other people, unless there's an ulterior motive because it has to look that way to other people so that, you know, I don't know, you can build a business and things like that. But sponsors know that too because sponsors can see on the back end. So it's kind of interesting, you know, like this whole idea of faking your way to the top. But... I have to say, in my years of experience, and I know there's been a lot of people that have bought subscribers and bought views and things like that. I've said that for a long time. I mean, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the secret behind the scenes that, of like who does it and who doesn't. And when, and like when numbers don't match up or, you know, it's like if I, it's it just, it's, it's just interesting to know who does it, right? Because it, I think it really speaks to their character and it really speaks a lot to that person's need. And we talk about YouTubers <clears throat> needing validation or whatever, but when you are faking it to look like you are nothing that you are, because you need the validation, I mean, when your comments don't match up, when I'm getting almost as many comments as you and you're getting six times as many views on a video, I mean, like, that alone should say something, right? I mean, just, it's ridiculous to me. It's really sad, really, you know? Like, I don't know. Do some work on why you need so much validation from people that you will never meet, you know? Um, I don't know. I would rather... And in all honesty, you know, <clears throat> for a long time I have followed this channel called Bay Nation. Um, and every once in a while I give them a shout out. So I'll give them a shout out right now. Uh, and I, I love these two sisters over there. They used to be, it used to be called Bitchin' and Eatin', but they changed it to Bay Nation. See, it's Bitchin' and Eating Bay Nation. Okay. And they do like two, like every New Year's they do like a 24-hour live stream. So I'll put their link below. Please go subscribe to their channel. I was just telling somebody the other day, I was like, I'm eat. I used to like get like McDonald's and what they do like mukbangs and they just talk on camera. They have like 20 people in a live stream, 30 people, right? And they're so incredibly grateful for the people, the community they've developed over there of 20 to 30 people. And sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes I've been in a live stream of theirs. Um, sometimes I say that I'm there and sometimes I don't, but Sometimes I'll look and they'll have like nine people in there and they just keep it going. They just keep it going, you know, and they're so excited about it and they're so like proud of their channel and stuff like that. Like that's really what it's all about, right? Doing something that you're proud of. I'm not somebody that would be proud of having to fake it for somebody else. I think that's pathetic is what it is. I think it's desperate. Um, and, and, you know, not just in buying views and buying subscribers, but in also like this this is something I've talked about for seven years over here, like this trumped up drama that influencers have to do because they aren't willing to rely on their own, own merits and their own talents, right? It's like, oh, I have such a great palette coming out and I stand behind this palette and I stand behind my makeup that I have to develop 15 drama stories to actually sell this palette because nobody wants this piece of shit, right? You know, a lot of people come to my channel people that don't like me and they'll say things like well you call out all these other people but it's not like you have any talent you use other people's for names and i've never lied about that not once have i ever lied about that that my channel is anything but a lowly drama channel and i am gossiping and talking tea about youtubers and pop culture figures i have never acted like i was something that i wasn't okay and i'm not doing a bunch of trumped up drama to try to sell my channel i don't feel like i have to do that because if I get a thousand views or I get a hundred thousand views, to me, I'm grateful for what I did, you know? When I do dedicated videos over here about like recovery or something like that, those aren't highly viewed videos on this channel because people want to know what just happened today in the drama community. 
But the comments that I get where people are shouting out their sobriety dates and people are sharing their stories or people will say, hey, I'm not there yet, but because you shared your story because so many people are commenting in the comment section about their sobriety, I think one day I can get sober. So maybe on a video like that, I might get a fourth or a fifth of the views that I would get talking about somebody like Jeffree Star. But you know what? In all honesty, I'm proud of those videos. Those are the videos that I'm the proudest the most of. It's easy to get on video and talk about what somebody did today on YouTube or whatever to pump up some drama. Those are the videos where I feel so connected with people that are struggling out there or have struggled, whether it's in recovery from drugs and addiction or eating disorders or love addiction or sex addiction or whatever issues are going on in their life. You know, to plant the seed, which is the only reason why I ever share that story, and you guys, by sharing your stories in the comment sections, you are planting the seeds as well. So I don't really care if I get a ton of views on videos like that. And those are the videos that I am the proudest of doing. You know, I don't need to fake my way to the top. And I know a lot of other people that don't need to fake their way to the top either. You know, that to me is pathetic. That means that you do not believe in your own merit. I've never said I was anything other than a drama commentary channel talking about some stuff over here. So I don't got nothing to prove, you know, but people always want to say that about me. They're like, well, he's never had a real job and he's never done. He has no talent. He I wrote a book in 2014, published the book, and I've been sober for 28 years and 11 months. I have a master's degree and an undergraduate degree. Um, worked for almost 13 years in a treatment facility. Worked my way up from the ground all the way as far as I could go in that facility. I've dedicated much time to many organizations that I fully believe in. And I don't say that like, throw it in my face, I'm just a lowly drama channel, right? Because, like, that's the insult that they always go for. And I'm like, well, I'm a little bit more than that. But today, that is what I am. Today, I am a drama channel that talks about YouTube issues. And I'm damn proud of that. I am damn proud of the fact, whether you love me or hate me, that I am a drama channel, I'm a YouTube channel that has been able to exist for seven years and that people still want to listen to me. I think that's fantastic. I'm proud of that. Listed with my many accomplishments, this channel and my six other channels are at the top of some of those accomplishments. I'm very proud of it. It's not easy to get on YouTube or any kind of social media outlet late in life and, uh, you know, build an audience and things like that of people that actually want to get up and watch your videos and say like, oh, I love your videos. Like, that means so much to me. You know, I would never fake it because the amount that I get is, is, is overwhelmingly enough and even more so than that, you know? And, and I think it's about being grateful for what you've been given and for what you have. So I want to talk about Colleen Ballinger today. And since you guys give so much to me, I want to give a little bit back to you. So I want to share some of your responses that you guys shared on a tweet that I put out. Because I kind of want to hear, and I, I've only read like probably 10 total. And I think there's something like 100 and some responses to this. I wanted to hear what you guys really had to say about Colleen Ballinger making her return to YouTube. Now, the reason why I'm filming this video tonight instead of tomorrow is because I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. And um, it is Cousin Fun Day. And Caroline, my cousin Caroline and I are going to be running around all day, running errands, having brunch, things like that. I'm sure it's going to be crazy busy at Costco, at the grocery store, at Trader Joe's, everywhere that we go. Um... So I'm filming this today, so I have this to put up tomorrow because I don't know that I'm have uh, tons of time to film um, a lot of videos on my channels tomorrow. And I know that I'm definitely taking Thursday off. So I might wake up tomorrow and post this video and just be like, I'm taking the rest of today and Thursday off as well, and I'll be back on Friday. So I wanted to have something to put up for tomorrow. And I really wanted to hear what your responses are, especially because somebody just sent this to me, and I don't know if this person wants to be called out by name. So I'm not going to say their name, but I did thank them for sending it to me. And they sent, it, sent this to me and they said this was a comment I saw in Colleen Ballinger's like, newest video. And I thought that this was very telling. This is why I think it's important to note that Colleen Ballinger is deleting comments, okay? And what comments she's leaving up. Because if, if she 
weren't painting a false narrative like people buying subscribers or people buying viewers and this is why the deleting of comments you know delete I have no issue with people like okay when you do a very serious video like for example um, I don't know showing rocks no I'm joking if you do like a very serious video like, you know, I've, I've seen videos where people have talked about, like, a parent passing away or they've talked about, you know, like, a spouse passing away or an illness or something like that. I totally understand disabling comments on a video like that. I get it, right? I also understand the need to delete comments when people are threatening you or attacking you or whatever, right? Um... In her comment section of Colleen Ballinger's videos, which I think this is interesting that she has this now, and here, hold on just a second, she has in her videos, hold on a second, Colleen um, Vlogs, let's see if it pulls this up, okay, if you go to any of her newest videos, she has on here, um, well, her newest vlog that was posted eight hours ago is called, called Chopping Off My Hair. That was a choice. Okay. So anyway, she says down here, Colleen Ballinger is dedicated to creating a safe, inclusive, positive space online and bullying will not be tolerated. Thank you. I think it's interesting that she puts this in here and she says online. Okay. Not just in her video space, but online. I think what's interesting about that is as she has this in the comment section of her video and even if she was worried about legal implications um, and even if and I know that Colin Ballinger doesn't have any control over her audience, but this is a little bit different. There are a lot of people that are attacking the victims in defense of Colin Ballinger, okay? I think if Colin Ballinger said, I do not like this, I do not want you guys to go and attack um, any of these, these people over things that they've said, I don't want it, I'm not about bullying, I'm about creating a safe space. No, she didn't say that in her video. She said, I'm all about creating a safe space for Colleen. She's all about creating a safe space for Colleen, but she doesn't give a rat's ass about these victims. Or she would get in a video and she would say, you guys, I see a lot of negativity about these people out there, okay, who got hurt as my result or whatever she said. I'm asking you not to send them any hate or any of that kind of stuff, right? Um, you know, to be honest with you, like, I take bullying very serious, but when I see it, it is almost like targeted harassment. I mean, it is, you talk about cyberbullying, I mean, harassment to me is even a harsher word. I mean, th the things I see that people say to Becky, Oliver, and Adam, it is targeted harassment. Absolutely 100% targeted harassment. She is a grown woman and has yet to get in a video and address that. Okay, that would not cause her any legal implications to ask her audience to stop doing that. Do I think it would stop completely? Absolutely not. But do I think that it would send a clear message that Colleen Ballinger cares to some degree about these kids that used to be super fans of hers and stood by her for so long? Yeah, I think the fact that a 36-year-old woman is bitter at these people and can't take any responsibility is spoken to the fact that she's not in therapy and hasn't done any therapeutic work. Because I think to even relieve some of that, I mean, she can't come out with an apology. She can't take accountability. People are like, well, that's because illegal. That's because of this, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, and I addressed that in my video yesterday. Fine, let's give her that, okay? Let's say that that's what it's about. I still think she should do it. I think that's the right thing to do. I think there comes moments in life where you are met at a fork in a road about what is the right thing to do as, as a better human being? How am I going to grow as a better human being? And what should I do to protect my ass at any expense? I think that really comes down to how really good of a person are you at your core? And how, how good do you want to be, right? We all err. We all make mistakes, right? She says that in her video. But what links are you going to to correct those mistakes? Are you, are you showing that you've corrected these mistakes? Are you explaining what the mistakes are? Are you saying to the people out there that have been hurt by you, please do not send them any hate? Or are you sticking it at the very bottom of your description box? Because that's all I'm saying is, this is not a, a space for bullying. So if you come over here and you say anything that is bullying to me, Fuck the victims. I don't care what you say to them. You can go say whatever you want to say to them, okay? You can wish violence on them, and I proved in my video that they have, in defense of Colleen Ballinger, okay? You can wish violence on those people, those young people. I don't care about that, okay? But you are not going to do it on my channel. So any critical comment on my video is going to be deleted. So somebody sent me this comment. I thought this comment was very interesting, right? The, the likes to dislikes ratio, I just want you to know, are um, like very still high proportion towards the dislikes. Like all of her videos, their last couple of vlogs that she's posted, I mean the dislikes to the likes are just like 
it's so many more dislikes to likes, right? But here's the thing that I want to let you guys know. Just a personal decision that I made. Unless somebody comes to me and says, Colleen Ballinger said this in a vlog, or Colleen Ballinger said such and such in a vlog, and you should probably watch it to address that, then I will go and I will fact check that. I have no intention of giving Colleen Ballinger my view, okay? And I'm not telling you who to watch and who not to watch, but you don't, we don't, there's no reason to continue to watch somebody's channel. I'm not saying Colleen Ballinger, I'm not saying anybody. You watch who you want to watch, okay? But you don't have to continue to watch somebody's channel just to wait for the next thing that they're going to say. That's what she's banking on, all right? I personally made the decision, I'm not watching her channel anymore. Unless somebody says that she says something profound in a video that needs to be watched and addressed so I know exactly what she said. But no, am I going to give her a view with four mid-roll ads in a 12-minute video about rocks and chopping her hair off? No, I could care less about Colleen Ballinger. I am not supporting Colleen Ballinger. I'm not putting money in the pocket of Colleen Ballinger. I am not help b building her platform. I'm not doing any of those things so that three years down the road, she can hurt other people, okay? Just like James Charles continues to do because James Charles has a platform. People are like, how does James Charles have a platform? This is how James Charles has a platform. And let me prove it to you by this comment that somebody sent to me. And this is a comment that Colleen Ballinger doesn't have a problem having on her uh, video. So somebody sent me this and they said, you know, this is very telling on her video. And, it's, and they said, please keep on calling her out for this reason. And the comment is, just know that people will criticize your comeback, but eventually they will lose interest. I'm really glad you're back. And that comment has 131 likes on it. In the time that the video has been up, it's one of the most liked comments on there. So let's read this again. Just know that people will criticize your comeback, but eventually they will lose interest. This is what Colleen Ballinger is banking on, okay? You out there in the YouTube universe, you have the power to make that happen or not make that happen. I know it just seems to you like you are one person, okay? It has been very, I've been very cognizant through the years, and maybe it's because I have smaller channels like my Peter Rissom's channel where I might get two to 800 views a day on a video or something like that. 800 to 1,000 being a lot. I never get more than that on a, on a video typically. But usually about five, 600 is what I get when I post videos on my Peter Rissom's channel. I don't care, I love that channel. I, I get so many people that are like, this was the message I needed to hear today. Thank you so much for sharing this, blah, 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 whatever, and it helps me too by reliving stories of my life and things like that. I'm so grateful for that channel, you know? It it's, keeps me grounded and keeps me peaceful. Um, but, you know, one of the things I've realized by having that channel, having my booktube channel, having other channels that have slowly grown over time, is that when I go from like, let's say, you know, 701 to 702, like I realize that is a real human being out there hitting the subscribe button. Just like I realized that when it goes from 701 to 700, that's a real human being out there unsubscribing from that channel. I haven't lost sight of that in the seven years that I've been on YouTube, okay? I don't gain that many subscribers that, and for a long time, couldn't gain a subscriber to save my life. I don't gain that many subscribers that it's lost on me when I'm getting 20 to 100 a day or 20 to 30 a day or 10 a day or, you know, two on some channels a day, that those two people are helping my channel grow. But people like Colleen Ballinger have lost sight of that. They don't care because they have millions and millions and millions of followers and fans they've been able to manipulate, okay? So they have lost complete sight of that, right? What she's banking on is that people will forget this. This is what Colleen Ballinger's plan has been all along, that people will forget this and people will go on, just like this comment said, and they will lose interest. Well, the story came out over the weekend her PR tactic worked, prove me otherwise, okay? And um, and it was hidden behind all this other stuff that was going on in the world, like the Taylor Swift stuff and like other things. Somebody said that she mentioned, she were, said something about her comeback about like, I don't know, but some, comparing it to something. But I was like, if she did that in a video, she is like, she's really trying to get attention on these videos. But she did this whole thing and released it when she did so journalists wouldn't be working so it would hide behind the stories and by monday or tuesday the whole thing would be um forgotten right colleen ballinger has either won over major mainstream journalists number one number two they're bored of the story number three everybody doesn't 
nobody really cares about Colleen Ballinger anymore. So she's going to get away with this. She's going to be able to return. She's going to start getting more views and more views and more views. So we're three years down the road. She's got a thriving channel the way that she did. She's writing another book that's inappropriate. And she is pitching more shows to people. And she's going back on tour again. Y'all, you think she's going to quit Miranda Sings? Miranda Sings is money to this woman, okay? She's not going to quit Miranda Sings. She's just not. And if she does, she'll redevelop it or make it part of a further show she's doing. She's already thinking about her next show and next tour right now. Trust me, okay? She's already thinking about what can I do on my next tour to make it a little bit different so it's not necessarily Miranda Sings, but Miranda's part of it. She's already thinking about that. Trust me, okay? She hasn't slowed down one bit. Not one bit. You know? And... You know, I was sitting here and I was thinking about this today and, um, you know, we were watching um, the Kardashians, Life Lessons with the Kardashians, you know, and Tristan was talking to Courtney and about his cheating and things like that. And Courtney was really like kind of, you know, holding him to the fire a little bit and being like, well, why did you do it? Why did you do it? And one of the things that he's, no, he said it to Kylie. He said it to Kylie. He said, my biggest fear is that my daughter's going to go to school and somebody's going to come up to her and say all the bad things that I did, okay? And my immediate response, and I said it out loud, because my husband and I talk out loud, we're watching these shows, I said, then why did you do it, right? And I immediately was starting to think about this Colleen Ballinger thing, and I was like, at some point when her kids are going to school or around other, I mean, they're going to say, oh, your mom's Colleen, your mom is Miranda Sings, and it's not going to be with smiles on their faces. You would think for that reason alone, she would want to come out and do the right thing. I mean, she said she's a mother first and foremost, and she has to take care of her kids, right? Isn't taking your, care of your kids partly emotionally taking care of them and protecting them against all that kind of stuff? So wouldn't you want to come out and, you know, I have a friend of mine that was in Playboy years and years and years ago, okay? And she, and I, you know, asked her, like, all this kind of stuff. People would ask her all the time, why were you? I mean, she got a lot of attention for being in Playboy. She was in Playboy, I think, twice. And all this kind of stuff. Got a lot of attention for it, right? And she was like, this is the best I'm ever going to look. I'm celebrating my body. I'm very, very proud of my body. When she had her kids, people started asking her, what are you going to say when your son is in high school? What are you going to say to your daughter, blah, 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 whatever. And she would say, I'm going to tell them when it's appropriate time that I am proud of my body, that mom was proud of her body, and yada, 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 right? Well, now her kids are like in their 20s. But at the time that it happened, I remember what happened. Her son and daughter found out at the same time, and they were in high school, right? And somebody else found out about it, and they came to them and told them, and then they came to their mom, right? And she said that. She said, I have nothing to be ashamed of. Mom was very proud of her body at that point. It was nothing inappropriate. And no, it's not okay for you to see right now, but down the road when you're a little bit older, if that's something that you want to see or see or you want me to explain the process to you, I don't have a problem doing that. I'm proud of that. That was a decision I thought out. Will Colleen Ballinger be able to say to her kids when they come to ask her, hey, mom, like kids are teasing us at school about you being in group chats with other teenagers and now we're that age. Like, what's she going to say to them? She's not going to be able to say, yes, and mom got on video and took full responsibility for that because there was nothing right about that. And that was what I was talking about the other day when I said that I'm so thankful for my mother and father who have made many, many mistakes in their life and they have hurt people and they have apologized for it, taken responsibility and looked at those people in their eyes and owned it. And I'm so grateful that I've had two parents and many, many friends of the family and many, many aunts and uncles and other people around me that learned to own their shit and taught it to me and led by example, okay? So I don't know how she's going to do that down the road because she hasn't done that yet. So I don't know how she's going to have that conversation with her kids. And I know it's apples to oranges, you know, but like my friend who did this magazine spread really thought it through. Like, well, when I do have to have this conversation down the road, I want to make sure that when I do this, that I can stand firm and say, I was proud of myself. I felt that my body was beautiful. I am proud of my body. I have nothing to be ashamed of myself for. Can Colleen Ballinger say the same things? Can she say she has nothing to be embarrassed about? She has nothing to be ashamed of? That in that moment that she was group texting or having group chats with minors, and she was asking about sexual positions and virginity and things like that. Can she say in that moment, could she look at people that she loves and say, I have nothing to be ashamed of. In that moment was my proudest moment. 
Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how many fans welcome you back. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how much money you have or how many houses you own or how many Netflix shows you've had or how many books are on the bestseller list. At the end of the day, okay, and I know this because I buried quite a few people in my life. You don't take that shit with you, okay? At the end of the day, at the end of your life, when you look back on it, you're going to look at all that stuff and you're going to realize the cards, the money, the fans, none of that stuff mattered, right? What mattered was, were you able to look the people that you had around you and you loved in the eye and be honest with them that you had priceless moments that were based on truth, that were based on honesty, and in it stopped, that honest moments that were based on integrity and truth and humility, shared experiences of life. Or does everybody around you know that you're a fraud too? Because I have to tell you, there is no way that Colleen Ballinger's closest friends, I don't care what they're telling her to her face, and she has to know this too. Even her family, okay, who has participated in a lot of this, they have to be looking at this and being like, this is not good. Like, she, does, like, there's something, there's something off about Colleen, right? Like, there's something off about her, and she doesn't even see it. And this is the thing. If this is all to divert attention and be a deflection so she doesn't suffer further legal implications or whatever, then it's even more pro prob problematic. It's even more troublesome that she's willing to go to those lengths. And the fact that her fans are saying to her with the most likes on that video, people will just get bored of this and they'll forget about it and go away after a while. And that's what she's banking on. And she let that comment go through. So that tells you that she stands behind that comment because she's deleted so many comments that she doesn't stand behind, okay? So she, she's okay with that comment. That's what she's saying is, I hope this to be true. By letting that comment stand on her video when she has deleted so many comments, she is saying that this is what she hopes will happen. That yes, some people will criticize my comeback, but sooner or later they'll lose interest and people will forget. And that's what she's banking on. And that's why I won't shut the fuck up about it, okay? And neither should anybody else out there. We should continue to talk about this. So that three years down the road, we don't have to see on all of her friends and James Charles' friends' Instagrams pictures of a birthday cake that said, Angie did it at my birthday dinner, making jokes about sexual misconduct, okay? How we even got here in a world that a woman on this level is accused of such massive misconduct and people are singing her praises in the comment sections and telling her it's going to be okay, people are going to lose interest. I ain't going to fucking lose interest, I can tell you that right now. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Read my lips. Not a, not going nowhere. Uh-uh. Not going nowhere at all. And you know why? Because of this comment right here. Because this is what our fans are banking on. And this is what Colleen Ballinger is banking on. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not shutting up about it. You can't make me shut up about it. Okay? Send me a cease and desist, Colleen. I'll tear it up right on camera. Okay? This is my opinion about a public figure. Uh, you wanted to be a public figure. You are a public figure, okay? But this whole PR stunt that she pulled over the weekend, it worked. Because I don't hear Rolling Stone talking about it. I don't hear nobody but Pop Crave talking about it, okay? Nobody's talking about it. Now explain to me how Spill Sesh can come out unless Spill Sesh has major people. I mean, she worked for TMZ, right? So that could be possible. How uh, Spill Sesh comes out with a face reveal and less than four hours later... I mean, every major news, uh, Time Magazine even tweeted out about it, right? Oh my God, drama commentary channel Spill Sesh, who's been around for four years, right? It's not like she, her ass was made of gold, that she's in all of these news publications, but not one of them is covering Colleen Ballinger coming back after months. She's either got them somehow, or, which I'm not saying that the way that all those magazine articles happened for the face reveal wasn't because somebody's behind the scenes working working real hard, okay? A bigger stuff than that has happened on YouTube and none of them people have ever talked about it before. So is it interesting to me that a face reveal gets that much attention? Hell yeah. It's even more interesting when you, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors, babes, okay? We know that. So it's m even more interesting to me when you see that a situation like Colleen Ballinger, which is probably in the seven years that I have been doing YouTube and pop culture stuff over here, the biggest story, the most profound impacting story that has ever happened in my career of being on YouTube, 
and nobody's talking about it this week. Nobody. I mean, drama commentary channels here and there are talking about it, but it's already losing steam. No major articles are talking about it. Are you kidding me? This is nobody could shut up about this for months, and now it's crickets. It's working. It's it's working for Colleen Ballinger. You know what? What's next? She's gonna come out with an interview like James Charles did in the Cosmopolitan. Hey, maybe you could hire that Gabrielle Bluestone. She could do that article for you. I heard that she's a journalist that helps defend predators. So maybe you could hire her to defend you. I'm saying that of a public figure. Gabrielle Bluestone is a public figure. I can have an opinion on a public figure. And my opinion is that that piece was bought. Okay? Just like the Andrew Quintana piece on Colin Ballinger was bought. They're all bought. Okay? They're not real journalists that have any kind of integrity. People want to come for drama channels and commentary channels all the time. At least we get on video and we say our fucking truth. Okay? I ain't bought. Ain't nobody buying me. I ain't on nobody's payroll today, baby, and I haven't been for a long time. Now, I know there's some drama channels out there that are on the payroll that got to have people in their videos and got to follow people because they don't know how to find the news on their own. I don't follow none of them people, and I can find the news on my own, okay? But I know them fancy-ass drama commentary channels that copy everything we do and copy our videos and our setups, watch our videos and copy our stories two days later and get 100, 200,000 more views than us, okay? Listen, you can get a watered-down version over there if you want with some pretty quick jump cuts. Over here, you're going to get the fucking truth. I ain't bought, okay? I ain't been bought, I ain't bought, and I am not going to be bought, Okay? So go read your fucking TMZ, but if you want the truth of what's really going on in the world, come over to Peter fucking Mon and I'll tell you the truth, okay? And if you can't handle the cussing over here, I'm sorry, she's back, she ain't going nowhere either, okay? Mama, grab your purse, you can leave too. So anyway, let's get into this video. I want to read some of these comments that y'all left. Man, whoo! I have it. I have had it. I have had it. Lord, I have a stroke sitting out here on this front porch. Okay. Now, let me get to, uh, <laughs> let me get to my, uh, uh, see, I'm so problematic, aren't I? Here, 34 days away to Christmas, 345 days until Halloween, 35 days to Christmas, 346 days to Halloween. That's the kind of stuff that I tweet out. I ain't tweeting no problematic bullshit. FYI, I haven't even watched that ladies rock vlog yet. I've been too busy listening to audiobooks all day so I can start listening to Christmas Cozy Mysteries this week. The rock lady can wait till tomorrow. I still haven't watched that video. I don't plan on watching that video. I ain't giving her no power. Uh-uh. Because like I said, one person fucking matters, okay? We all start with one person on Instagram. We all start with one person on TikTok. We all start with one person on YouTube with one subscriber. And usually, <laughs> it's ourselves. But that don't matter. That don't matter, okay? We got a second one, right? Y'all are real people out there. You are real people. You vote with how you push that, pick, that button of subscribe or unsubscribe. You hold the power. You, we don't. You do. That's why it's called YouTube. You hold the power. Do with it what you must. Then I tweeted out, five weeks until Christmas Eve. <laughs> then I posted out, what do we think about this lady posting the second vlog? See, I never said Colleen in none of these tweets. And then I said, this lady making vlogs is unbelievable. I just refer to her as this lady. And then this, that tweet about that super fan that told me I was a piece of shit. And then something about the Blair Witch Project. So I used to, uh, I'll still remember seeing that in the movie theater. Then I said 347 days until Halloween. I retweeted that. Then this, uh, I, I follow all these uh, horror movie, you know, tweet, Twitters. And this one has a picture of Friday the 13th, Saw, Halloween, and Scream. And it says, one franchise has to go forever. Which one are you pick? Pick it. And I retweeted it and I said the one that I wanted to go was the franchise of that lady who made a fall vlog. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. <laughs> anyway, then uh, 348 days, 349 days, I said uh, till Halloween. And then I said, let me know your thoughts on that lady's fall vlog. <laughs> Why does that crack me up so much? I call her that lady. She is that lady, that foolish lady. My lord. Okay, listen, that haircut was a choice. Let's just not even act like it was, okay? Now, people wanted to come for my poor dog, Boo Radley. Okay, he don't like to get his hair cut. He gets super, super anxious. Our vet did us, she, she, they don't do grooming at our vets, okay? We usually take him to another vet, but he couldn't get in in time for the holidays, and he was getting so long. He's an adventurer. He don't care if he ever gets his hair cut. He's like, listen, I'm a hippie, okay? I don't need to ever get my hair cut. I'll be dreading that all day long. But he's so much happier when he gets his hair cut. 
Somebody on my Peter Nest stuff video today, they said your groomer did a job on your dog. I mean, he literally, I mean, it's like, I don't know, it was like a crazy person and had like them tremors and was like, zoom, 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 zoom. I mean, but he don't know. He do not, he does not know, okay? He got his little toenails trimmed, his little paw you know, nails trimmed, and they did leave his, he, I said to my friend Tana Jean tonight, I said, my lord Tana Jean, they left him looking like one of those dogs, you know, she goes, a Chinese crescent. I said, yeah, those dogs were, the, the, the heads were all big, but then the bodies like all shaved down. That's what he looks like. True story. He looks so cute though. I keep on telling him, I said, you're the most handsomest Christmas dog in the entire world. And he said, well, what happens on New Year's Eve? And I said, well, hopefully we can get you another groom by then, but we'll talk about that new rally we'll talk about that so listen if i can make fun of my dog's own groom then colleen ballinger needs to figure it out did she go to the same groomer that my dog went to for that that haircut did she, did she talk about it in her vlog today did she cut her own hair and then do a vlog about it so people would talk about her hair and all this kind of stuff the hair the hair is bad it's bad it's not good listen that's my opinion on a public figure oh your body's shaming her it's her fucking hair Look at mine. You think I'm singing praises about this dude up here? I mean, come on. Tracy Turnblatt, that is a hair note. I know what my hair looks like. Trust. But look at my hair when I went to the event the other night. Oh, my Lord, I was all chanel out, girl. Uh-huh. chanel out, baby. And I had my hair done. Everybody was like, I have never seen you without a hat. Go look over my Instagram. Those pictures are over there real quick. Except for you calling Ballinger haters. I'll block you with quickness if you come over there and leave some nasty comment. So, anyway... I put up here, let me know your thoughts on that ladies fall vlog. Comments will most likely be used in a video. It has 201 comments. It has 12 retweets or reexes or whatever you call them. It has, um, oh, Tiny Jean just texted me and said, did you watch Salt Lake City? No, I haven't watched it yet tonight, Tiny Jean. Um, we watched two episodes of House of Villains and then we watched the Kardashians. And now I'm gonna watch Below Deck, but I already know Natalia quit because she not get into it with Kyle and he got in her face and told her she's the fakest person ever knew. And then I'm gonna watch Welcome to Plathville. I heard it was really good tonight. And, or was it on tonight? Yeah, it was on tonight. And then I gotta get, I, I wanna start watching Sister Wives. I'm so excited to start watching Sister Wives and Thousand Pound Sisters. Okay, I already watched one episode of that. And it's got 6.4 thousand views on it. So let's hear what people had to say. I'm just gonna read them straight down. Okay. Um. <laughs> Somebody said, I refuse to watch her LOL, just waiting with bated breath for your video. And I tweeted back and I said, it's been up for an hour. <laughs> Cause it happened. <laughs> And this person responded and said, what? I'm telling my friends now, watch party. Oh, I live for that, okay. Somebody said, she's disgusting and how dare she return and act like nothing has happened. I mean, I'm not really surprised, honestly. I was holding out hope for a little bit of uh, humanity that she might do the right thing. I don't know why I ever expected that from the devil. Um, and she don't even wear Prada. <laughs> I was like, is she, is that purple sweater with the flowers on it? Is, or the, is that the sweater that Sutton Strack wore on that date on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? I was like, no, no. Because Colleen Ballinger don't have that much taste. She don't even have that much taste, okay? <sighs> okay. Somebody said, make no mistake, this is her attempt at brushing things under the rug. Her blanket statement and apology was aimed at no one of value. And make no mistake, I will not stop speaking about what she has done until a proper apology has been issued. Well, all right, girl. Um, somebody said, but did she apologize to Adam? Did she apologize to the other fans turned victims privately? No. And I know that for a fact. I also think she should address and apologize to Trisha publicly. I, I think that would be a start. Um, somebody said, I'm so happy she's getting the validation from 12 year olds that need, that she needs so desperately. I really hope the victims can move on from this. I really, to be honest with you, I don't, when you read the comments, I don't think the majority, I think the majority of them are bots that she paid for. <laughs> oh, those poor kids. They're not going to be getting no Christmas presents this year because mama's got to pay for views and bots and things like that for her comeback. Oh, well, Christmas Vlogmas will probably pay for all that, right? Okay. You know what's interesting to me is that James Charles' channel got demonetized, right? About something that happened offline. And uh, Shane Dawson's channel got demonetized. Other people have gotten their channels demonetized. Why has YouTube not stepped in and done anything about Colleen Ballinger, spoke to the allegations, made any kind of changes whatsoever? Why has her channel not be de de been demonetized at all? At all. Is it because YouTube thinks that Colleen Ballinger can make them too much money? Now, here's the thing when people say that, right? 
You think about how many channels are on YouTube, right? If you looked up the top 100 channels, you would be mesmerized. Like, the majority of them are, are like, music, you know? When I looked it up a couple years ago, it was, like, the top five of them were, like, number two was, like, this... Indian pop star that was super famous that I had never heard of that was literally getting 100 million views a video, okay? I mean, we're talking bigger than PewDiePie and them kind of people, right? And I was like, this is like crazy, right? So they're making that kind of money off of some pop star that lives in India. You think they really care about Colleen Ballinger and her 200,000 views on her return vlog? I don't really think they do. So why would they not step in? When they stepped in with James Charles, they stepped in with these other people and demonetized their channels for a while. It was a slap on the hand, you know. They got it back. But why wouldn't they do that with Colleen Ballinger, you know? Because Colleen Ballinger, does she have some in at YouTube? Well, that's even sicker then, right? Because a lot of people are saying, well, YouTube is the one that is facilitating and allowing this. Well, her platform is from YouTube. Miranda Sings did start on YouTube. Colleen Ballinger started on YouTube. Everything she built started on YouTube. So YouTube is where she began her platform and has the largest platform, right? Not It's not on TikTok or Instagram. It's on YouTube. That's where her biggest platform is. So you would think that YouTube would step in is it because nobody's asking YouTube to step in? Is it because nobody's saying, hey, YouTube, you need to do something about this? I don't know. It's weird to me. I mean, I, I will say this. Like, you know, Morphe cut ties with James Charles because Morphe was getting so much, you know, shit. Morphe cut ties with Jeffree Star because Morphe was getting so much shit, right? YouTube demonetized James Charles and YouTube demonetized Shane Dawson because YouTube was getting so much crap. Is anybody saying anything to YouTube about the fact that Colleen Ballinger needs to be dealt with? Like, if YouTube took a stance and demonetized her channel, they'd say, well, there's nothing in her videos that's wrong. Well, there was nothing wrong in James Charles' videos either. He was doing TikTok challenges and makeup reviews. You know? I mean, I understand why they demonetized Shane Dawson's channel because there was a lot of problematic stuff on his channel, right? But, like, okay, if you want to say that about James Charles, it happened offline. It didn't happen on YouTube. It happened offline. I'm not defending James Charles. Y'all know how I feel about James Charles. But it happened offline. It wasn't happening in his videos. But the, the platform of YouTube was giving him that power. YouTube stepped in and did something about it. And he hadn't even done videos with that Susan, I don't even, Jones, whatever her name was. I don't know her. She's not the CEO anymore of YouTube. But remember he did videos with her and stuff like that? And he still got demonetized. So why are they not stepping in with Colin Ballinger? It's like, y'all need to pull it together. Like, I am like... I don't understand why nobody is taking any action. It's like, well, people are like, well, there's nothing that the victims can do. There's, there Maybe there isn't a lot that the victims could do. I said yesterday in my video, if she's so scared of legal, I wonder if the victims, there's something they can do that they don't know that they can do. Because she's getting legal consultation not to say anything. So maybe there's something out there that the victims don't know that they have power over, right? Okay. But, you know... A lot of people are like, well, there's nothing the victims could do. There's nothing that we can do, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not true. There's a lot of things that we can do. By start, I said I wasn't watching Colleen Ballinger anymore. I'm not giving her a view. I'm not subscribing to her. I'm not following her on any platforms. Okay, I know that there are some drama channels out there, or at least one, that says, well, we got to follow these people because they can't get notifications if they do something, and i got to get notifications. I do not follow Colleen Ballinger. How quick did I turn around and make a video? In an hour of her post in her vlog? I don't follow those people. That's a bullshit excuse, okay? And I'm speaking right to you. And I don't care if you take it personally or not. You support Colleen Ballinger. You support Manny MUA. You support James Charles. You support all these people by following them and giving them a platform to continue to hurt people, okay? So blow it out your ass with that. I got to follow them as a drama commentary channel. A lot of drama commentary channels do that. A lot of drama commentary channels don't. And a lot of drama commentary channels learned way before you were on YouTube that maybe that wasn't the right thing to do things and they stopped following them people, okay? I don't follow none of them people. Don't need to. There's not a reason why I need to follow any of them. Still find out the tea right away. Within 10 minutes of her posting the video, I mean to tell you, I got like so many text messages from people in my real life, okay, that don't even follow Colleen Ballinger. Like, did you see this on Twitter? It's like everywhere, right? I got messages from drama commentary channels. I got messages from other kind of channels. I mean, listen, you do not need to follow these people. That's a bullshit excuse, okay? But now if you unfollow them, it'll look performative. So see, you done screwed the pitch, all right? All for that fame and those influencer parties. See, we paid for you to be able to have those invites to influencer parties. But guess what? I wouldn't go even if I was invited because they're a bunch of phony ass snakes and I don't want nothing to do with them. But you have at that, girl. You have at that, okay? <sighs>
<laughs> the new generation, scared of that. So somebody else says, um, people are like, oh, Peter's a little heated in this video. Well, I was peaceful when I started, you know, but then I started thinking about things and I thought, <laughs> I guess I'm not so peaceful today. <laughs> I guess I'm not. I like, keep on messing with this. I don't know. I keep on thinking this is going to turn into some faux fur, like, whew, like Cruella de Vil. And I'm going to turn into something else. And I'm going to be coming through that camera, getting people. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Sometimes I'd like to think I have more power than I do. Somebody said, uh, her time before YouTube demonetizes her channel. Oh, this is interesting. For inactivity was drawing close. That is all. Well, I understand that, but that's not necessarily really how it works. Apparently, Ethan Klein addressed this on his H3 podcast about her, but that's not, and I said this yesterday, that's not really how it works. And YouTube very rarely ever follows through with that. Trust me, if they're not going to follow through with it on a booktube channel, they're not going to follow through with it on Colleen Ballinger's channel, okay? Let's just be for real. Somebody said, I just watched uh, for the apologies. So after the three minute and 15 second mark, only thing I got was my ego made me sing with my ukulele. Sorry, you're offended. Woo! But what was she specifically apologizing for? Because I seem to have missed her saying that. She didn't. Somebody said she's only coming back now so she can still hold her annual gift of a Christmas bonus. You know, this is the thing, right? All these people are saying that Colleen Ballinger is coming back just for the AdSense money, for Vlogmas money, all this kind of stuff. And then people are saying, well, there's nothing that anybody can do about it. If that's true, if she's really that money hungry, which I believe is a huge part of this, okay? And that's why she's coming back and posting every single day. The one thing YouTube could do that they've done to other people is demonetize her channel. It'd be interesting to see if YouTube demonetized her channel and she wasn't getting any sponsorships, if she would continue to post vlogs every single day through Christmas. That'd be really telling how much she loves her fans and she missed her fans. Is she willing to vlog for 25 minutes to 30 minutes every single day like she's doing now, not making any money just because she misses her fans so much? I, I, I liked, I'm a betting person. I'd like to see that. YouTube, where, can the real YouTube stand up? Where are you at? Why are you demonetizing these other people, but you're not demonetizing somebody that's been doing just the same things that they have? This is where they all protect each other. Because I can tell you right now, if I was James Charles or Shane Dawson, okay, I'm not saying they did anything right, because y'all know I don't think they did. But if I was Shane Dawson and James Charles, I'd be listening with quickness. YouTube, Mrs. YouTube, Mr. YouTube, can you explain to me why my channel was demonetized for a year or six months? But Colleen Ballinger hasn't suffered any consequences, and what she did was uh, in the same stratosphere as what I did. What? You can't hear me? Do you need me to call back? Huh? Do we need to have a meeting about this? I mean, like, it's unreal to me, right? So everybody's saying that she's doing it for the money. Well, then let's stop watching her. If you feel that way, if you love her, keep watching her. But why hasn't YouTube stepped in and done anything about this? If it's really about the money, YouTube has the power to stop that, right? Incredible. Um, somebody said, I have not watched it and I won't. I never consumed her content and was never really a fan. However, I am surprised and somewhat relieved. Uh, okay, I'm not going to read that one. Somebody said, I'm not sure how I felt. I wasn't directly affected, but I felt let down as a previous subscriber of her vlogs. I honestly don't think there was anything she could say to make even slightly better. Maybe not returning would have been the right thing to do. Somebody said, uh, it was put out on Pamela's birthday. Coincidence? Doubtful. Okay, so... She put the video out, and I didn't talk about this in my last video. I think I skimmed across it. But she, Josh David Evans' new wife, she put the video out on his wife's birthday. Now, there are 364 other days that she could have put this out there, right? So, that was a very calculated move, all right? Do I believe that she that had something to do with it? I think there were several reasons why she put the video out when she did. But do I think that was in the back of her mind as like a fuck you for doing that interview a swoop? Absolutely, I do. I think that's who Colleen Ballinger is. I think Colleen Ballinger is a vendetta-filled person. I think she's scary. I think the power she has is scary. She has hurt multiple people. There's a lot of people out there that don't care. She's got a cult around her protecting her, okay? God forbid. Trust me. I know what that's like. I've had people come for me so intrusively into my personal life and let me know that they are Colleen Ballinger super fans, okay? They ain't afraid to hide it. And they've let me know how intrusive they can be to my life. Well, <laughs> I got their personal information that quick and turned it over to the investigators and the attorneys. So they'll be dealt with eventually, right? Because y'all think that she can hide in Minnesota, Okay, and places like that. But, you know, so you'll be dealt with sooner or later. But this is the, the non-bullying positive vibe community that she holds on to, right?
Give me a fucking break. Somebody said, if someone was her birthday, she needed to resurface so she can get those happy birthday IG story shout outs. She also does some charity on her birthday and people were wondering if she's going to do that. Somebody said, if she was actually sorry, she would have said the names of her victims and apologized to them directly. Amen. She's too little, too late. My opinion of her has changed forever. She did this on Josh David Evans' wife's birthday. Wow. Um, I mean, even if, okay. She knows the story. She, don't tell me she doesn't know that that that's his wife's birthday and things like that. Or she couldn't have had her people look into it. She's got tons of people working for her, right? The fact that you, if you could put this video out whenever you wanted and you weighed it, or you, if you knew that information and you still put it out anyway, that's such an F you. Not to mention that she had, to, when people are like, oh, it's a coincidence. Okay, fine, let's say it's a coincidence. But she has people vetting out the right time. I read a whole PR statement about it yesterday. She's vetting out the right time to say things, when to do it, when to miss the media and all this kind of stuff. And you don't think somebody's coming to her and being like, hey, Colleen, um, by the way, your ex's new wife, it's his birthday or her birthday on the day that you're planning to post this video okay and she wouldn't think that the entire internet is going to call her out for this and maybe it would be better to post it the next day or the previous day to avoid that birthday now what she said is i don't fucking care go with it that's how sick she is as a person okay it's all about colleen it's always been about colleen you can hear that in his interview. You can hear that in the victim stories and how she used them. You can hear it from f previous friends of hers, how she lied to Rosanna Pancino, how she lied to Trisha Paytas. She's lied to tons of people, okay? That's who, tr that's who Colleen Ballinger is. And for people to sing her praises, she's a liar. She's a fraud. She's a fake. She harms people. She takes no accountability. And y'all are singing her praises. And no, it's not 12-year-olds. Go to her comment sections. It's adult women that are saying things like, Oh, Colleen, I had my kids. My kids are now in high school. I've watched you all along. That's some scary shit, okay? That you are supporting this woman. Trust me, if that happened to your high school kids, you would not be okay with this at all. Or would you? Or would you be okay with that? Or are you the parents that are blaming the parents of the victims and saying that they should be responsible for this so that you uh, can take any responsibility off of Colleen Ballinger? Well, let me tell you to those parents out there, okay? As a parent or as a kid of a parent that didn't know what was going on with me, I could have hid anything from my parents, okay? You parents out there that think that your kids can do no wrong are the ones that will wake up and find out that your kids were doing the most wrong one day, okay? Oh, my kid wouldn't do this. My kid wouldn't do that. <sighs> Trust me, okay? Your kids hide a lot of shit from you. As you did from your parents, as I did from my parents, as we all did from our parents, okay? But that goes without saying. It doesn't really matter, okay? What matters is you are sick as a parent defending Colleen Ballinger when there is evidence out there that is showing how she talked to people that are the age of your children and you are supporting her, okay? That is, that is weird. It's not even weird. It's sick is what it is. But you know what, Colleen, those are your fans. You should be proud of them, okay? I mean, this is really, like, in all honesty, the fact that Colleen Ballinger, like, she's so happy to be back and talk to her fans. Let's just look at this for a second, right? Colleen Ballinger's fans that have stuck by her and are continuing to watch her videos and sing her praises are people that are willing to excuse predatorial behavior, excuse grooming allegations, not look at factual evidence, completely be blind to everything that's going on, on the internet, don't really care about people that are assaulted or hurt, wish violence on other people, okay? I mean, really horrific violence on people, death threat people, whatever. You can have that fan base, Colleen, because trust me, I wouldn't want it, okay? I wouldn't want it at all. I love the audience that I have cultivated, okay? And people sending me pictures of how they've decorated their porches for Christmas, okay? And people sharing stories with me about having to say things to their kids about mistakes that they've made in their past and how guilty and ashamed they were, but they were able to work through that with their children. I'm proud to have that audience. I'm proud to have the audience that watches my videos that is willing to stand up for what is right, okay? Other than have a bunch of ass kissers that are unwilling to look at the truth and will support a predator. I wouldn't want that audience. So good thing that you have it, because I don't think anybody else would either. So somebody says, she keeps saying things like, I'm a mom, I'm in therapy, I bake cookies, because she's trying to come across as a good person. That's called manipulation. Um, 
Somebody said, I'm sorry it needs to be said to our victims, not to our subscribers. I agree. I thought that was such a weird flex. So that's where people will say, well, she said I'm sorry. Yeah, to her fans for not having film for so long. Um, it's so she can make money through the holidays. A lead up to the petty vlogmas. Um, okay, I think that once again, the victims have fallen through the cracks and that this was an apology only to the fans. Um... Even in a hundred years, she came back a moment too soon. What? That's a good title for a, a... That should be her memoir. You should, you should title that her memoir. Sadly, it's what I expected to me. It's all an illusion of taking accountability. 100% for ads and making money. I refuse to wash. Watch. Seems fishy that she is coming out with a video before the holiday season. She has the audacity to come back at all. She should be in jail and banned from any and all social media for what she did. Not. I'm just reading the comments. To be honest, I don't have the stomach to give her the time of day. Um, no one... It stopped right when I was talking about her chicken coop. I'm at an hour already. Somebody said, um, no one cares about her chicken coop. So disappointed, not because I wanted to see more drama, but because after watching her for so long, I expected more from her as a person. I'm in shock at how biased she was, uh, blase she was about it all after being gone for months because of it. Still, as I mentioned, the victims directly and apologized to them. Rent must be due soon. I was honestly not even shocked, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. Okay, somebody just put a bunch of clown emojis. Now, that was on my Twitter. So that people don't think that I'm completely biased to this whole situation and I'm just rating people that are on my Twitter. I also saw that Pop Crave, um, they posted about a return too, and I thought the responses were interesting. Pop Crave, which has 1.6 million followers, feeding your pop culture hunger since 2015. I do not follow them. I thought I did, but I guess I don't. But anyway, um, they posted this. I mean, they post so much. Four hours ago, four hours ago, four hours ago. Let me find this. Seven hours ago. Hold on a second. Um... Okay, I finally stopped the camera, you guys, because it took me so long to get to this post. It was from three days ago. I swear to God, I went through like 843, uh, 842, maybe 841. I don't know the exact number of posts. Okay, they literally post like 100 times a day. So I had to go through all of this, but here it is right here. You can see. And it says, Colleen Ballinger on her ukulele apology song. The last video that I posted is really embarrassing to say the least, which is why it's still up. I was being accused of some pretty awful things and was mad. Oh, you mean like that you're a groomer, not a loser? I should have handled the situation with maturity and empathy. You'd think? <laughs> okay. So let's just read some of these comments underneath here, right? Somebody said, puts out the worst apology, now apologizes for that apology, but still hasn't apologized privately to her victims. Somebody put this clown emoji thing and said, so she's making an apology video for the apology video? Um, somebody said, every video of hers is embarrassing, not just the last. Kick her off the platform already. Somebody said, we did not at care and do, we do not care and did not ask. Somebody said, please just log off, Colleen. Somebody said, how old is this person that they just realized this? Somebody said, um, she is growing indeed. It takes maturity to know and accept when wrong. <laughs> what did somebody comment to that? She's still claiming she's being accused instead of taking accountability for things that she actually did. The people have ample receipts of her doing it. Uh, somebody said, bro, the only reason she came back and only apologizing is for the money since this month gives her and content creators a lot of money for the holidays. She obviously hasn't matured or else if she did, she would would have privately and publicly apologized to all the people she had hurt. Does this person respond? Hold on a second. No. Somebody said, it's just her apologizing for how crappy the last video was. She's still claiming she's being accused and making herself the victim and not taking accountability or disproving anything, even though everybody has ample evidence, some even from her own shit. Exactly. But all those fans out there, they love her. We're so happy you're back. This is the greatest Christmas present. Uh, somebody said, sometimes when we get angry for being wrongly accused, we act on impulse. I don't blame her for doing so, too. She's human, after all. Oh, my God. One positive comment. Uh, obviously, they don't understand the situation, but okay. Somebody said... Uh, let me go and watch the video first. Somebody said, well, well. Somebody who said, as soon as someone uses the word empathy, I completely go blank. Um, somebody said, she is a vocal singer or a guitar one? <laughs> um, somebody said, <laughs> I didn't even understand this. Pop Crave, did Elon shadow ban you? Strung, somebody said strumming on heartstrings instead. That's crazy. Somebody said I need to watch it. Somebody th said she's awful. Colin Ballinger calls her ukulele apology song embarrassing and comeback fall vlog video. Well, I, well, I don't know why they post that. Okay, thanks. 
Uh, somebody said, why is she looking at me like that? <laughs> I'm going as Colleen Ballinger for Halloween next year. <laughs> Them dead ass eyes. She's realizing now, LMAO. <clears throat> Somebody said, um, <laughs> I don't even understand some of these comments. Some, I mean, just like some of them are just like posting pictures of food and stuff like that. I don't get it. Um, somebody said, well, <laughs> somebody said, we don't care about this nobody. She's a little too late figuring that out. Well, duh. I forgot she existed for a bit. Missed that. Um, somebody said, thing is, we all moved on. So, yeah. So, that's the thing, right? Is that everybody moved on. I mean, there's tons of negative comments on this pop crave thing. Accused uh, is a pretty strong word when multiple people confirmed. Uh, somebody said, mature empathy bus dropping when? Referring to her song that she wrote. Um, somebody said... She's deleting comments almost immediately. St st still no apology. An apology for an apology. LMAO, she's cooked. She's over. Only took her five months to realize that. Why is she still talking? Are we going to need another one after this? Or, um, yet she only apologized to the public and not the people she groomed. Uh, took her this long to realize. Uh, took that thing this long to realize. Oh my lord, I thought that lady was bad. She keeps missing the mark over and over again. It's time for her to retire. She's at manipulation station now. Why? She's so over. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Somebody says, um, Says the 37-year-old. Somebody says, and she's over. She's still taking no accountability. I mean, this is not even on my Twitter, you guys. So this is, read the room. Read the room of why she has no positive comment or no negative comments on her own videos. And yet the dislike ratio is overpower overpoweringly. Over it it's a lot more, okay? Like, if you had money, you'd want that money of the dislikes, not the money on the likes, okay? You get what I'm saying? It's a lot more dislikes to likes, but there's no negative comments on her video. Smoke and mirrors. I know when I was talking at the beginning of this video about buying uh, subscribers and views, I wasn't talking about Colleen Ballinger. Hers match up. Some people's don't, though. But anyway, um, interesting. So the majority of the public is not on Colleen Ballinger's side, but she's painting the picture as if her fans want her back. When maybe it's really only like 100 people that are leaving those comments. The rest are bots. And nobody really wants her back. And she knows that. So she's a fraud. Woo, Merry Christmas, Colleen. Anyway, I guess happy birthday. I don't know when her birthday is, but uh, wow. Okay, um, that charity that you ran, you might want to, I don't know, do a fundraiser for yourself. Oh. You already did that, didn't you? Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you on Friday. Bye.